Hello and welcome to Asia Business Report. I'm Sharon Jeet Lail. Now it's a busy week for U.S. companies reporting earnings. We'll be hearing from some key U.S. tech uh, firms, including Google's uh, parent company Alphabet. Uh, the company released the second quarter numbers later today. And they may also release its YouTube revenue for the first time. And on Tuesday, we'll hear from blue chip stocks, General Motors, as well as McDonald's. Tuesday is also the start of the Federal Reserve's two-day policy meeting. While on Wednesday, we find out how Facebook and Japan's Nintendo are faring, followed by Amazon, Twitter and Starbucks on Thursday. Well, earlier, David Kuo, the chief executive of Motley Fool in Singapore, told us what to expect. That was David Kuo there. And in just a couple of hours, the International Monetary Fund will release its latest global economic forecast. Attention will be on what the IMF says about China's economy, as well as any potential drag on the UK's economy because of uncertainty over Brexit talks. In other business news now, U.S. health website WebMD is reportedly close to being sold to private equity firm KKR. The company is estimated to be worth more than $2 billion. According to Reuters, KKR and WebMD are negotiating an all-cash deal. The purchase of WebMD will add to KKR's portfolio of Internet brands, which includes dentalplans.com and allaboutcounseling.com. Now, Australia's consumer watchdog agency is investigating the recall of Takata after a driver's death earlier this month, uh, which was potentially linked to faulty safety equipment. It may be the 18th fatality worldwide related to faulty airbags made by the auto parts maker. More than 2.3 million cars in Australia have been targeted in a recall since 2009. A Japanese company filed for bankruptcy protection last month. And it should be a smooth commute for many Japanese workers this morning. Now, the world's leading oil-producing countries are meeting in Russia today. Ministers from the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, as well as other oil producers, are all going to be in St. Petersburg discussing plans they've put in place to deal with the current glut in world oil supplies. Well, earlier this year, they came up with a plan to curb production to stop crude prices from falling, but that hasn't really been working. If we take a look at the oil prices right now, we can see that both uh, light crude as well as Brent crude trading below the $50 mark. Well, earlier I asked Jonathan Barrett, Chief Investment Officer at AS Alliance in Sydney, what impact non-OPEC members will have on production. Jonathan Barrett there. Now, the internationally renowned circus troupe Cirque du Soleil is looking outside the big top in a bid to diversify. It's buying the U.S. entertainment company, which owns the Blue Man Group. Let's find out what's behind it. Cirque du Soleil is putting the spotlight on the Chinese city of Hangzhou, where it's planning a permanent show. I spoke to Daniel Lamar about why he's doing this. We see China as being the next market where Cirque du Soleil can really establish themselves in a very, very strong way. And I'm announcing this tour with Kuza, which is the right shows to enter the Chinese market for the next 14 months. What are some of the difficulties of going into such a, a tightly controlled market? Our challenge marketing-wise is to make Chinese understand that what Cirque du Soleil is all about is very, very different. Because we're not only a circus, we're dance, we're music, we're scenography. So we're a different type of show. And we will put a lot of effort to make sure that the Chinese understand that. And when Cirque du Soleil acquired Blue Man Group, you said it would broaden your horizons. What exactly did you mean by that? Now with Blue Man, we're, we're sending a clear signal to the market that we want to offer something different. We see a huge potential for Blue Man Group. So that's how my life has changed since last week. Now when I'm meeting po potential partners, I'm not only offering the Cirque du Soleil shows, I'm also now 
selling Blumen Group. One of the oldest uh, circus acts, Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey, had to shut down after almost 150 years. Now, is that something you fear could happen to you? You know, the, the challenge we have is to remain a leader, to remain on the edge all the time. And, and so we want to bring new ideas, new technologies is going to play a major role in our future. Uh, you know, 3D technology, virtual reality. We, we are investing a lot in research and development. It's our challenge to remain relevant to the public, and so far, it's working very well for us. And that was Daniel Lemaire of Cirque du Soleil. Let's take a look at the markets before we go. We can start with Asia because some of the markets have just opened. Uh, the Nikkei is actually trading just slightly lower uh, earlier. And you can see that Australia's all ordinary is already down well over 1%. This is really due to the falls we saw in oil prices uh, down over 2% on Friday. That's taking a, a real hit on the commodity stocks. And of course, a lot of nervousness in the markets as well ahead of the Fed Reserve's uh, meeting later this week. And of course, all of those earnings we're expecting as well. And that's it for this edition of Asia Business Report. Thanks for watching.